want you to hit me as hard as you can. First, there was the collapse of civilization. Anarchy. Genocide. Starvation. Then when it seemed things couldn't get any worse, we got the plague. The living death. Quickly closing its fist over the entire planet. And then we heard the rumors that the last scientists were working on a cure that would end the plague and restore the world. Restore it? Why? I like the death. I like the misery. I like this world! Oof. That's a hell of a way to intro the latest real action. But the only way when we're talking about the canon classic, Cyborg. sci-fi epic that was their attempt to mimic the success of Mad Max and Blade Runner, but had something neither of those films had, the muscles from Brussels himself, John claude Van Damme. Van Damme's first foray into sci-fi, but definitely not the last, Cyborg was specifically geared towards his skills at the time. Acting obviously not being one of those skills, he's largely required to brood and kick butt as slinger Gibson Rickenbacker. Not exactly the most awesome hero name ever, and certainly it's no Frank Dukes. A slinger is what they call a mercenary in this dystopian landscape, where plague has wiped out much of humanity, leaving only the pirate gangs to run roughshod over the helpless few. What little hope is left is in the hands of a female cyborg who carries information that could cure the plague, but not if she's stopped by the massive Hulk-like Fender, who as he makes clear right from the beginning, likes the death, likes the misery, and he really likes this world. Van Damme's Gibson is the only guy who can escort her on the long journey to Atlanta and along the way he picks up some help from the altruistic Nady, who basically plays the hopeful counterpart to his grim, nihilistic tracker with a score to settle and demons that haunt him. Talk to people now about Cyborg and what they'll tell you is that it could have been so much more with a bigger budget. That's definitely true, but director Albert Pune made the most of what little he had to work with. The world he created is extremely violent, cruelly so, with the signs of death littered everywhere, even though some of the corpses look extremely cheap. In fact, the goriness of it was so steep, especially during the slaughter of an entire village, that vast amounts of the scene had to be cut just to achieve an R rating. What's the limit on the number of heads on spikes before the MPAA sips in? What Cyborg has is a terrific amount of world building, and I would say its limited resources add to its charm. Well, except for the rubbery Cyborg effects which are, well, a distraction, Pune had made an impression already doing a lot with a very little on films such as The Sword and the Sorcerer, Alien from LA, and Radioactive Dreams, endearing him to genre fans. His slightly unhinged, Homoerotic energy is exactly what the film needed to separate itself from a glut of post-apocalyptic sci-fi. Like, what's up with all of the knife sharpening and why is it so erotic? And why are all of the characters named after guitars or music companies? Gibson Rickenbacker, Strat, Fender Tremolo, even Pearl Prophet. Do I need to explain the phallic history behind the rock guitar? Probably not, and this ain't the place for it anyway. This being a canon film, the focus had to be on Van Damme, and it's hilarious, but also totally on brand, that the first we see of him is his leg. Not his face, or even his vaunted muscles, just his leg, that iconic leg that jump kicked the shit out of Chong Lee. That leg, which does Van Damme's legendary split, 
Attached to that leg is a boot with a knife in it. The boot knife. You've seen it a thousand times in movies since, but 12 year old me couldn't get over how cool the boot knife was. How was this guy not ruler of the damn universe with something so awesome? And while we're on the subject of JCVD's limber limbs, you damn right his split makes an appearance and once again it's to inflict massive amounts of bodily harm. In Bloodsport, it was to punch a guy straight in the nads. Here, it's to launch an aerial strike on a stalking behemoth, played by the great character actor Ralph Muller of Gladiator fame. Others register their hands as lethal weapons, but none are more deadly than JCVD's split. Cyborg arrived at a curious time for canon. Basically the final movie of the revered Golan Globus era, Cyborg wasn't to have happened at all. At least not initially. Pewn had been hired to direct Masters of the Universe 2 and a Spider-Man movie back to back. But this was during a time when canon was branching out to larger, more expensive features that would set the studio back greatly. Masters of the Universe was a financial bust. And that was the same year as the maligned Superman 4, the quest for nuclear boredom. With Cannon hemorrhaging cash, they were forced to drop deals on Pune's other films, so they brought him in to do Cyborg, which he hurriedly wrote in a single weekend and shot in about three weeks. The result was a final hurrah for Golan and Globus, earning close to $10 million on a $500,000 budget. Sequels followed, including Cyborg 2, which starred a young Angelina Jolie and Elias Casey Jones Coteus. A third starring Malcolm McDowell was released straight to DVD in 1995. Pune went on to launch his own series of Cyborg-esque films, but in 2011, he managed to get a hold of his original Cyborg cut, a more violent 35mm version with the original music by Tony Ripperetti and Jim Saad, which you can buy direct from the filmmaker himself. Now that's just pretty goddamn cool. Cyborg's cast is basically top to bottom with muscle heads. Dudes who look like they drank a gallon of super soldier serum and chased it with a radioactive spider bite. The standout of the bunch is Vincent Klein as the sadistic fender. A villain so badass, he responds, Been there, when told to go to hell. He literally crucifies his foes, rocks a chainmail shirt, and has eyes so menacing it's a wonder Gibson didn't piss his pants. As an actor, Klein was even lower on the emotional ladder than Van Damme, which is why neither was asked to say all that much. But when Klein had going for him was incredible presence and a godlike physique. He probably could have been a huge star in the genre realm if he had wanted to, but his career is mainly small appearances. The biggest in Point Break, Double Dragon, and Baywatch. The final battle between Gibson and Fender is an exercise in bulging biceps and neck muscles, a brutal display under the pouring rain. There's something mildly westernish about the way Pune shoots it, like two gunfighters having a standoff. Hmm, Slinger? short for gunslinger maybe? Of course, there are no guns and it comes down to the blunt edge of a blade, as it should. The best of the
Van Damme would go on to do the more polished Universal Soldier and Time Cop, but neither has quite the personality or longevity as Cyborg. And if rumors are true that Pune is working on a true sequel that would also bring back Klein and Van Damme, then that's news worth sharpening your knives to. Cyborg gets 7 out of 10 Stallones. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.